What's up, family and friends? Welcome to the Woke Nation, our nation of factual truth, where we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of factual truth without fear, without favor, and without faint. Here we encourage us to live our life and live it well through the knowledge of factual truth, not through faith, not through belief, not through fear, not through hope, not through love, not through humility, not through education, but through the knowledge of factual truth, where you base every truth on facts, because truth is not permanent on, unless it is based on facts. So, and you are born not to serve. You are not a descendant of slaves. You are not born to serve any God or any human being or anything. You were born to live. And so, and how you can live is by exploring life. That's how you gain knowledge. Knowledge is not a gift. There's no God that can give you knowledge. There's no one that can give you knowledge, but you go after it. People can heap knowledge on you, but until you, are, you go after it, you will never get it. So knowledge is not a gift. So you explore life, then you enjoy life. If you don't explore life, you never enjoy it. You will be like a slave that is in a in a plantation or in, in a slave master's house. So when he's happy, he's contented with being there. He's not free, he's not living his life, he's not living in his land, he's not having his own life or her own life, but having the life the slave master carved out for him or her. So, and wherever you are, I know, I, I mean, I encourage you to enjoy your life. Uh, I supposed to go to work, but I didn't go because I had a gout attack uh, two days ago. I was off yesterday. So, I called my doctor and uh, he called the pharmacy. I picked it up yesterday and uh, I, that's why I came up today. I was, I was supposed to do this yesterday, but I said, no, let me rest yesterday and today then I'm here and it's well so i'm doing great uh today i want to share with us what i titled doing god's work doing god's work if you hear about people talking about god or doing god's work it is always people doing all that or saying all that no god has shown up to talk about itself no god has shown up to do anything for anyone it is always people. So I will use the Bible, which they used to brainwash us to show us that why they put those things down and why they encouraged us to or commanded us to, you know, keep doing those things they call good works, you know, is to cover the lies that God exists. But God does not exist. It's a lie. Anyone that preaches God exists or there is God is preaching lies. Or that person is a liar. Like many people are trained liars. You call them ministers of God. They were trained from childhood to lie. And I think that's another thing I will discuss maybe in my next video. Because we are trained to lie from birth. Our religious parents train us to lie. Our religious leaders train us to lie. And that the major lie they train us to tell is there is God. When you pray, God has heard you. 
you know, God answers prayers. All those religious terms they taught us, they are all lies. And you see us telling those lies, passing it down to our children, passing it down to our people, our neighbors, everywhere, saying there is God. You know, somebody commented on my post earlier today, said, uh, you know, when I tell my classmates, you know, the, the factual truth, they get upset. Yes, everywhere they do. When you tell people the factual truth, because society, religion, politics, all of them has loaded us with many lies. So they get upset and you are the one trying to tell, uh, save them or help them to save themselves and save themselves their time, their money and their resources. But they get upset at you because that thing is affecting their core belief, their core value, which is based on lies, all lies. So it, we will not give up uh, like myself. I will not say because people don't want to accept it. You know what? Fuck it. Let them live their life. Let me live my life. If I don't do it now, I will do it in my next life. So earlier the better. So because nothing will make me again believe in God or worship God. In my next life, I will never come into a religious family. No, Because what you, 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 are, you are the one that will build your future now. Yes. Your past, your present, and your future, they are the same. You determine how you live in it. So there is nothing God can do for you. So do you want to continue living like, like that, believing there is a God you cannot see? This God is in, is unknown. No one has seen him, but they talk, keep talking about his head, his hand, his eyes, his mouth, his walk, all that bullshit. No. When you know the truth, I remember one time, our people always say this, in my next life, you, I will not be, in my next life. But the same people will tell you they are going to heaven. Or they know, this is where you are. Where you were before you were born is where you will return. It is called the earth. But you cannot leave the earth, you are earthly. No matter how you try to build the spiritual world out there, it is still on earth. You can never live outside the earth. You can never leave this earth. This is your eternal home. It is common sense. Any other thing they talk about, um, spiritual being, spirituality and all that, is a belief. It's a claim. It's imaginary. It's a made-up stuff. It is religion or it is spirituality, but it is not reality. Reality is this. You are earthly. Everything about you, visible or invisible, and whatever is invisible can be seen unless you don't want to see it. So anything that you want to see, including the air, you can see the air wave. If you want to see the air, you can, you can feel the air. You can even make one yourself. You're sweating. When you're sweating, you begin to blow because no air is coming. Okay, it's not coming. I'm a creator. I can create air too. You begin to blow. See? So everything, life is not myst uh, mysterious. It's not a mystery. Life is very simple. I've been saying that for years now. Anything it is in this life you want to understand, start with yourself. There's no teacher outside you. There's no one that can teach you better than yourself. You are that experience. They say that experience is the best teacher you. That's why whatever you believe, prove it. If you cannot prove it, trash it. If you cannot demonstrate your faith, your belief, why are you holding on to it? You are holding on to it because you are still afraid. You was you 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 are afraid of unknown. You don't know what will happen. Oh, they say cause may come on me. All that. Even some people that say they are not religious or they don't go to church or they don't practice religion. But when you look at the at their decisions or their words or look at and listen to their words, you find that they are still under the influence of religion because religion tainted everything we 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 have everything when we are growing up the knowledge they gave us was the knowledge of religion or uh, whatever we learn in school all of them has been tainted or you know uh, corrupted by religion so you uh, when you hear some people said the great scientists are committed to their religion yeah because from child that's how they train them if nobody tell them about god when they were born they will never say anything about they will never tell you there is god so some people try to remove, okay, let me remove God. I say there is higher force. What higher force? 
higher force that cannot show up. You are the one that will activate that higher force. You are the one that want to know about that higher force. You are the one that is saying that. So that higher force cannot show up. You are the one. There is no higher force higher than you. The higher force you're talking about is you. Whether in spirituality or religion, people remains the higher force they're talking about. People remain the God they're worshiping. So, but when you try to show this common sense, so why are you wasting your time, your money, your resources in the name of the unknown? When you can satisfy yourself in the known, satisfy yourself in the present, don't worry about the past or not the future. So if you don't like your past or what you heard about your past or you don't like your present, you can create your future. So you create your future with your knowledge. You can't create anything without knowledge. That's why God cannot create anything because you have to, you have to be real to create anything and you need knowledge to create anything. You cannot create anything by fear. You cannot create anything by faith. Everything is created by knowledge. You have, you have to gain that knowledge to know what to do. Then you do it. People don't believe what they know. People do what they know. This is simple. You can never do what you believe. You can never do what you have faith for. No, you only do what you know. You see, let's say you know how to open bottles, right? So you you always open bottle with your hand, right? If you don't have knowledge that there's a, there, there are some bottles that you can't open with your hand, it requires some tools, you know. So uh, I remember one time they say, uh, this guy shared that he say, you know, when we are doing our traditional stuff, they bring wine, so they be saying prayers to open it, you know, so. And the, the guy said, elderly man, they give the wine. He's, he was saying prayer, twisting the thing to open. You know, the stuff they put, you know, some of them, when it's hard like that, you have to drill it with something that will pop it open. So the guy keep, it was a made in Nigerian wine they gave to him. So it's not that foreign one. So he keep twisting and saying, it will be better wherever, amen. You know, you will born and then that it was a money ceremony. He was twisting it. Waiting for the time the thing will pop to say the last one, the thing came away, he was doing that. You see, so he don't have that knowledge. Okay, if you cannot open it with your hands, it requires a tool. Just move you, you pull it out. So that when people lack knowledge, that's where they labor unnecessarily, suffer unnecessarily, and die unnecessarily. But when you have knowledge, you will save yourself. God has not saved any life anywhere. Okay, see what uh, scientists are coming up now with, you know, using a, tri uh, using a um, uh, pig's uh, liver for human being. Transplant like that to save human life. God cannot do that. No God has done that at any time. I, in, in, remember, preachers used to preach that God has factory in heaven. He can, can give you new hand. He can give you, it's a lie. It's a lie. They will tell you one story of, oh, there was a minister. Oh, it's written in the book. One man with a withered hand. Jesus says, stretch it forth. He stretched it forth. His, back, his hand become normal like the other one. It can never happen in reality. Because the Bible is a fairy tale full of lies, full of deceptions for destruction. So no one can build their life in, on fairy tales and they live well. No one. So we need to build our life with knowledge. You at least, you know, you some of you that are graduates today, you you didn't become graduates by belief or by faith. You become graduates by knowledge. And if you say you paid to pass, you cannot pay to get a job or to stay in a job. When they ask you to do the job, you say you pass through school to learn and you cannot perform it, they fire you because knowledge is spring. Remember that. Never forget that. So welcome to Bible study. Let us talk about this doing God's work. Why it is that is people doing God's work? You know, it is because God does not exist. And the God is useless in reality. I was, you know, trying to wake up uh, somebody. I hate his family to come to America when there were nobody helped them and all that. And the, their visa was about to expire. And there was, I think it's a Deeper Life member. So for since yesterday, I was uh, telling, uh, trying to open his eyes. 
You know, he begin to say how God is there. I said, no, use your life experience. In your time of need, who help you? But I know what is going on in his mind because that is in the mind of every believer. When you tell them God does not help them, they say, no, God will use people to help them. No, even for the fact that you say God use people, it means that God cannot help you. It is any God that have to use people to do anything, whether to speak or to act, to fight, that God does not exist. It is people that created that God. So they have to speak for that God. They have to fight for that God. So they have to hate you for that God. They have to kill you for that God to prove. Imagine uh, Christians, for example, they believe that uh, evil, Satan is the one that does evil. Uh, Satan is the one that makes people sick and all that. But when, because you don't believe no more in their lives, they say their God will show you. Yeah, their God will make you sick or make you, you know, suffer for you to acknowledge there is God. We are just saying that God is the devil. God is Satan, and that's the truth. God and Satan are one entity, unknown. They don't exist. They are the design to make you. When it's good, you say it is God. When it is bad, it say it's devil. That's why good and bad has nothing to do with reality. It's not humanity. In humanity, we have positive and negative. We have greatness. We don't have, we, we are not good people. As a people, as human beings, we are not good human beings. We are great human beings. Good and evil, or love and hate, they are religious products. And many people, you know, they are drawn in it that they don't care to think. You say, oh, I like love. You know, you demonstrate love. Yeah, that's not, you are demonstrating, why are you demonstrating love? If love is there just like the sun is supposed to be there, but they tell you, people that they tell you their God is love. And God is not sin. God cannot show up. The same way love does not, and love does not last. That's why you see me, I'm no longer a believer in God because God is love and love does not last. God does not last. So I'm free. And that's why I'm trying to wake up our people also to free themselves. Okay. So the welcome to Bible study. And in Psalm chapter 82, so I will start with Psalm 82 for you to see why is it people doing God's work? God's work, they say it's God's work. If, if God is real, God's supposed to be doing his own work. It is not people doing it for God. Here what is it? says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. So when you say you are God is the mighty one, oh, God, is the, God is the only one, no. You have, even their book, they show you that, no, there is no one God. You can never have one God because gods are created by people. And you don't have one people, you have many people. So he said, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. He judges among the gods. But when they find out people are beginning to see the lies they show there, then in the New Testament, or I think, no, it's the same this place, they say that you are gods. But if God judges among the gods, and we are gods, so why do you need judges? Why don't, we don't supposed to use our brain no more because brain is used to, for judgment or to judge. You cannot live your life without judging. You must judge. Before you decide to do anything, you have judged that, and then before you decide to do it or decide to reject it. So God stands. In the midst, not only uh, 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 only uh, maybe God standing alone. So God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. He said, "How long will you judge unjustly?" Do you read? That's why you're supposed to read when, uh, with understanding. When I was a Christian, I don't read Bible like this. I don't read Bible with my senses. I read Bible by faith, by believing. Whether I believe it or not, they taught us that reading the Bible is like when you are eating rice made with fish, especially geisha. So when you are eating it, you come across bones. You say you don't spit out the rice you are eating because of the bone. You crush the bone, and go, or you maybe you try to take out the bone and continue eating the rice. No, you're supposed to pause while the bone. You don't supposed to be bone in it. You know, if the, if the person that prepared the food take out the bones. And why am I still seeing the bone there? 
So if they say that God is true to everything about him, so there is no confusion. God is not out of confusion. So why the confusion? If God is the one that judges among the gods, then when is why? And you say you are gods. So why the uh, verse two? You say how long will you? Who are the you? Is it God? He said, how long will you judge unjustly? No, they switch it to you. He said, and show partiality to the wicked. Show partiality to the wicked. The God who judge among the mighty and the judges among the gods. I mean, God who stand among the, among the mighty and the judges among the gods. Now ask him, how long will you judge unjustly? And how uh, and show partiality to the wicked. He said, defend the poor. Do you see that? Defend the poor. So God cannot defend even his worshippers, his poor worshippers. God cannot defend them. Now, if pass it to you that God, though God stand, uh, God stand, uh, uh, in the, uh, stand in the congregation and judge among the mighty, but you, you should not judge unjustly. You should defend the poor. If there is God, if God is real, why can't God defend the poor? And where was God when they became the poor? Why is God creating the poor and the rich? And he's talking about do not judge unjustly or do not be partial to the wicked. So if the wicked are rich, who made them rich? If God is the one that makes people rich, if God is the one that gives riches, you mean God give the, the riches to the wicked and not to the poor. If God is real, think about it. Think about it. If God is real, if God is the one that gives riches, why will God give riches to the wicked and not to the poor? Then ask some people to defend the poor and the fatherless. Why can't God do that? God cannot even defend his own worshippers. You hear the you we have seen the mass shooters going inside the churches, inside the temples, inside the uh, mosques, inside synagogues, shooting dead people who are worshiping God. They are in the presence of God. They believe God is there. God hears them there. God watches over them. Then people with guns go inside there or bomb and kill them out. God failed to defend them. The reason why they ask you to defend the poor and the fatherless is because their God does not exist. God cannot defend the poor and the fatherless, the motherless. God cannot defend them. That's why they ask you to do that. And that's what believers are doing. They are defending their God to prove their God exists. They are speaking for their God to prove their God exists. But if God exists, you are not the one that's supposed to talk about his existence or defend his existence. God himself is supposed to prove his existence. And the only way God can prove his existence is by showing up himself. Just as I can only prove my existence by showing up myself. I cannot preach about myself without showing up myself. I cannot. Especially when people said I exist and they, they demanded I show up and I'm not dead, I'm alive, I'm well, I can speak for myself, and then I will show up. That's, that's all it takes. Anybody, anybody that is, I, I don't want to de, de, de argue about the existence of God with anybody. I want to argue with God because you defending the existence of God or telling me about the existence of God, you are lying. That is nonsense. For the fact you are the one saying it is nonsense. It shows that God does not exist. If God exists, God will speak for himself. That is very simple. Okay, so he said, do justice to the afflicted and the, and the needy. God cannot do that. That's why they ask you to do that. Think about it. You see, the terrorists attacking everywhere. It proves to you that there is no God. And who are fighting terrorism? It is people. Who are fighting the insurgents? It is people. Who are fighting the wicked? It is people. Look at accidents. Look at disaster. Who are doing everything to prevent it or to help people when such things happen? It is people. 
You see, sometimes you're driving, you see another car flip, people stop to save the people inside the car. Whether they are believers or not, God never show up at any time to help anyone. It is always people who are doing what you call the work of God. If God is the one that created all of us, God should be able to defend all of us. He's supposed to be able to save all of us, whether we believe he exists or not. But God never done that. It is always people who are doing that. Then he said in verse, um, in verse 4, he said, deliver the poor and needy. Because God cannot do that. Deliver the poor and the needy. God cannot defend, you know, the afflicted one, the, the weak ones, the fatherless, the motherless, people that are suffering injustice. God cannot defend them. God cannot even defend his worshippers or his men of God. So you see them going with the armed guards, armed bodyguards, armed policemen protecting them, armed military men protecting them. Because God cannot do that. God cannot provide for anyone. If God can provide for anyone, nobody that worship God will be walking under any man or any human being. When you dress up and go to work, remember, it's you providing for yourself. It's not any God. The idea that God is giving you brain to work or giving you strength to work is ridiculous. It is delusional. It means you are delusional. You are living in that delusion and you love that. I mean, you like that illusion. It is time you trash it for the fact you are working, for the fact you are working to make money, working to, uh, to earn a living. It proves that God provides for no one. So food, money, material things. Because God cannot provide those things, that's why we have the labor force. Or workforce. You see people that believe there is God, but they say they belong to a to the to a union. What is the work of union to make sure you get paid well? Then to make sure nobody cheats you after you work, like in America. You see people, many people work in Africa, for example, in Nigeria, but they never get paid. You know their pension or their salary, they never get. They say in areas they. They still owe them. Some of them did not collect it until they died. Some of them died without collecting it, and their family member is still fighting to collect it. But these people will still tell you about the goodness of their God, about how their God loved them. But their God is not providing for them. So they join the workforce. They join the labor force. You have to go and work. If your God exists, you're not supposed to be working. Just because when your father exists and you are a little kid, your father provides for you. So when you are able to work for yourself, you don't need anyone to provide for you. So if God is able to do his own work, he don't need anyone to work for him. Okay, so say deliver the poor and the needy, free them from the hand of the wicked. God is not freeing anyone from the hand of the wicked. Look at the innocent people. Think about the innocent people in prison as we speak. They are locked up for what they have not done. How about those people that were locked up before because of marijuana, because of weed, but now they are legalizing the weed? This will show you or teach you that it is not any God making any law. It is people making the laws. It is people giving the commandments. There is no such thing as commandments of God or laws of God. No. What you're talking when you're talking about commandments of God or laws of God, you're talking about the laws that white men made up for us. They call it Ten Commandments, they call it the commandment um, laws of Moses or laws of God. But it's actually the slave our slave masters, which is the white men that made up those commandments, those laws, copied from us. Okay, so say free the, the hand uh, free free them from the hand of the wicked. Like People from my tribe or from my area, Biafra, Mazen Nandekano has been in the hand of the wicked Nigerian government. Who will free him? You see people saying, free Mazen Nandekano, free Mazen Nandekano. And these people believe there is God. 
So if there is God, why are you saying free Mazen Nande Kama? You don't even have to pray for him for to that God to free Mazen Nande Kama because Mazen Nande Kama used to broadcast about him every day. Pray to him before he starts speaking. Acknowledge God. Even where he's now locked up, he's still praying to God there. He's still believing there is God. Some people say, no, he knows there is no God, but he's using it, you know, to get the people. But that's bullshit. But where is God to deliver or to free Mazen and the Kano from the hand of the wicked that is holding him? Because whoever is holding you against your freedom is the wicked. They are, everyone that is holding person or people against their will, just like in religion or in politics, they are wicked. That's why polit uh, political leaders and religious leaders, they are wicked people. All of them. None of them is exempted. All of them. No matter how they try to use uh, hospitality, you know, to show you, you know, philanthropy, uh, I'm a great philanthropist. I give to the poor. That's bullshit. They are wicked. The wicked give to the poor. Okay? So the bit, right people in their right senses start to, to make everyone rich. Everyone's supposed to be rich. There's no reason for us to have the rich and the poor among us. If not for wickedness. Okay, so he said, they do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. They walk about in darkness. This is any time I hear darkness, you know, I try to co correct those, that impression that darkness means ignorance. Darkness means evil. Darkness means misfortune. No, that is a lie. They vilify darkness to hide their lies. They vilify darkness to hide the truth. So they make you believe it. Think about it. You were conceived in darkness. You see, when you want to have sex with a woman, especially a woman that is not proud about her body, what, what will she require? You say, turn off the light. And for you to be in that mood and begin to see yourself in the, in the mood you want to make love, you dim the light or turn off the light. You know, because when it's dark, everything is developed in darkness. So darkness, walking in darkness is nonsense. Okay? So you say you are walking in ignorance, and people are walking in ignorance because they believe without, without evidence, without seeing. So when you believe without seeing, you are walking in ignorance, not in darkness. People that walk in darkness, comes out with great news. That's why you see the inventors, because they walk in darkness, then they come to the light to see, because there's nothing in the light. Everything is in darkness. Light only exposes what is in the darkness, shows what is in the darkness, or what is done in darkness. You get that? Okay. So, you see, um, the, the, God is the chief robber or the chief uh, invader you know when he's talking about delivering people from the hand of the wicked god is the wicked god is the wicked so and uh, I, I made that post yesterday when god said he hates robbery you know how can you say you hate robbery according to isaiah chapter 61 verse 8 when you ask other people to go and rob other people of their land take their houses, take their goods, take everything they build. He say it is the land you promised them. How can you promise people the land and other people are already occupied? What is there? What, what is there? No, 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 no matter what, those people are innocent. You say, no, they were worshiping idol. You know, they were, they were sacrificing themselves. It's none of your business. For the fact God took other people's land and gave it to the people of Israel and uh, uh, killed those people, the people of Israel killed those people, it shows you that God is the wicked. So I am here to deliver people from the hand of the wicked, which is God. I am here to deliver believers, to deliver my brethren, my brothers and sisters who are in Abrahamic religion from the hand of the wicked God. This wicked God is called the God of Abraham. 
This wicked God is called Yahweh. This wicked God is called Jehovah. This wicked God is called Allah. This wicked God is called Jesus. This wicked God is called the Supreme Being. I am here to deliver you from the, the hand of this wicked God that will send other people to kill other people and possess their land. And they say it is possessing your possession. The God that we command somebody or you pray, you say, God, we touch somebody that labored, then they will send you their money. That God is wicked. A God that cannot give you money. A God that cannot print money and give to you. That God does not exist. That God is wicked. But you, the people must we give you. You know, God will touch them. And let God touch himself and give to you. Why can't God provide for you? He said, let me finish this, then I continue on as I say, okay? He said, they do not know, nor do they understand. That's why they believe. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. Just think about it. They believe that God created the earth. When you read um, Psalm chapter 24, he said, God has founded the earth. You know, he, has, well, he laid the foundation. He founded, he built it, he established it, right? But he said, all the foundations of the earth are unstable. Who made the foundations of the earth? If God is the creator of the earth, and everything that God does is perfect, nothing will be added to it, nothing will be taken from it. If God is perfect and does perfect work, why is the foundations of the earth that you believe that God laid, that God created, why are they unstable? Why are they shaking? Why is the chaos in the whole world, troubles everywhere, war everywhere? Why? When you say that God created the earth and God watches over the earth. So why the unstable? Why the confusion? Why the trouble? Why the evils? Think, think, use your head. Then he said, he said, I said, ye, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. That's a lie. And I've uh, had many people saying that we are gods. I know they have good intention, but that's a wrong expression. We are not gods. It's like saying we are males or we are females. No, we are not gods. But if you want to use that God idea, then we are gods and goddesses. We are males and females. We are not males. We are not gods. We are gods and goddesses. Males and females. Men and women. So, but this uh, religious idea that influences everything we have, you see people talking about we are gods. No, we are not. We are not gods, no matter how you put it. We are gods and goddesses. And we function naturally. We don't function spiritually. Some people say that we are spiritual beings experiencing natural. That's bullshit. We are not spiritual beings. We are natural beings. We are physical beings. We exist yesterday, we exist today, and we, exist, we will exist tomorrow. We have no beginning, we have no end, just like the universe. The universe was not created. We were not created. We are not creatures. Darkness was not created. Darkness is not creature. We are darkness. We are spring. We are eternal. I didn't say I. We. Because when we come together, we become all powerful. That's why you can never end us. Because we have no end. We have no beginning. And when you see they're talking about their creation, they say in the beginning, they can never put death to it because it's a lie. We don't have any beginning. The earth has no beginning. The universe has no beginning. So any book that is telling you that you have beginning or anyone that's telling you you have a beginning at the ending, that person is lying. And that's why we must learn about death. Death is not the end. And death, we, we shouldn't fear death. We should welcome death anytime, even now. But you see, we are struggling. We don't. The idea of death, the notion of death, the thought of death scares us. We have to overgrow that idea. We must grow up and trash it. 
knowing that we were born to live. We are eternal being. We are eternal being. We are not spiritual being. We are not temporal. No. Life is not short. Life is eternal. The life you have is eternal. It's not short. Okay? So, God also cannot speak for itself. See, God cannot defend his worshippers and children. God cannot provide for anyone. God is the chief robber and the invader. God cannot speak for himself because God does not exist. God is idols made by men. People made God. And mostly men made it. That's why they use the hymn for God. I see the gay people now fighting to uh, have she as God. See God as a female. See some people saying that women, a woman is God. No, it's not. God does not exist, period. Woman is human. Woman is natural. Woman is not spiritual. And woman is not my creator. Man is not my creator. I am not a creature. Nature is not my creator. <laughs> I am not a creature. I am a living being. I am part of that nature. Do you understand? Okay, so God cannot speak for itself. So that's why people have to speak for that God. That God has mouth, but they cannot speak. They will tell you that God speaks to them. If God speaks to them, God is supposed to be able to speak to you. And if they say God speaks to them in their head, but not audible, like face to face, as a man speaks to man, you know, they are delusional. They are schizophrenic. They are hallucinating. So that's why God cannot speak to all, although they believe God created all of us. So if God created all of us, why would God choose to speak to some people and not to all people? Think about it. He created all of us. So why do he have to speak to all of us through the few or through some people? Think, just think. Use your brain. You did not ask God to create you. I was, I was thinking recently. How can we, all of us, we are born in a place and among us, somebody rise up and say, God called them. God is using them now to speak. Then you see others bowing to them. You see others respecting them. Even you see people that are, uh, that are uh, old enough to be grandmother or grandfather to that uh, person, calling him their daddy. Like they read the Dochie, the Nollywood address, calling... Uh, Prophet Odumeje, her daddy. And she's a woman with grown children, grown up children. She's an old woman calling a young man like that her daddy. That's what religion does. Crazy thing. Look at religious people. You see the crazy words and crazy things they do in the name of God. So if God truly made all of us, God's supposed to be speaking all of us. He said he gave us life. He gave us brain as you believe. So why are you the one telling me to believe in God or telling me to accept God or telling me to serve God? God's supposed to be able to do all that without you. He's supposed to help me without you. Saying God is using somebody to speak to me or speak, uh, help me is ridiculous. You have to trust that idea and live humanly. It is it is always people who speak for God. It is always people who fight for God. And they are crazy people. Look at every people or every person that you say that they are speaking in the name of God or speaking for God. They are crazy. They have mental problems. That's, that's why they are hallucinating. Hearing the voice of God, seeing God in dream, in vision. Because they have mental problems. But in religion, that madness is legalized. You, you are crazy in the name of God, they will not lock you up. But when you are crazy outside the name of God, that's be, not being a minister, going to Bible school or theological school to be confirmed or appointed or anointed or ordained, then the, you will find yourself in the psych unit. 
they will, you will be forced to be chained down. You'll be forced to be locked up, saying you have mental problem. That's why when you go to psych units, you hear them saying, I am God. I am the Almighty. I am, I am Hitler. I am Jesus. I am that. Because they are crazy. But it's the same thing that all those pastors, all those imams, all those ministers, all those rabbis you have in those places of worship are doing. They are crazy. They're supposed to be locked up in a psyche, but they are treasured in, a, in churches, in mosques, in synagogues. They are crazy. Okay, so it is always people speaking for God, and those people speaking for God are truly crazy. See the crazy idea they give you. They come up with crazy things. And I'm happy there's these two videos. One was shared with me yesterday, which they are on my wall. The first one was uh, that guy, I think he's living in India or somewhere in, or somewhere in Asia. You know, he made about a, a, a minister of God or a man of God. He called himself the prophet of God. Now he said that uh, he need millions. He was calling for people to give. And that's what I've been saying. And that guy, you know, anytime you watch his video, he always said that thing. You cannot come from Africa and you are waking, especially living abroad, and don't see the, the ridiculousness of uh, somebody raising money when they say that there is God. And now they are calling people to bring money. If their God can heal the sick, if their God can um, make people rich or millionaire, so then why are they asking people to give them? Why are they doing fundraising? Fundraising in churches reveal to you that there is no God. When you see ministers, pastors, asking for tithes and offering, asking for you to give them money for the work of God, it is because there is no God. It's that simple. If there is God, they will not ask you for money. Then if, God, if they are serving God, why is it people that are paying their salaries? Why is it people that are funding their school or their travel and all that? They want to go for missionary work. They ask people to contribute money. But they say there is Holy Spirit that can do all things. There is God that can do all things. That this God don't really break protocols. You know, you don't need fast. You need faith. With faith, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. So why can't they travel without flight? Why can't they travel without bus or car? Why can't they do the work of God without money? Why is it those that claim that God is speaking or using them? Why are they asking you for your money? It's because your money is more ready than their God. What money can do, God cannot do it. And there's nothing God can do. It is always people using their time, using their life, using their resources to do the so-called uh, work of God. God never done any of his work. You say God created the earth. It's a lie. We created the earth with our thought. Well, that's why you see we are inventing things. See people going to the mass. Not any God. And people that are creating those things first, there are people that have knowledge without faith. Then people with faith will try to come in and begin to say it is God. You know, God is the blanket. You, you created something with knowledge. They throw that blanket, God, over it. God is the one that made it happen. God created you to make it. That's why he made it. <laughs> so God cannot bless or curse anyone. It is delusional. It is delusional people that are giving and working to, uh, to claim it is God's blessing. That's another thing you're supposed to know. For example, I think that guy mentioned it. You know, it is people that are giving, right? The reason why that guy said that if you go to a marketplace and you, you talk to people about your need, show them proof that you really have that need, they will give to you. That thing is wrong too, and we are doing it. What, what believers do? Now they give to the needy and to the poor because they claim it is God who is using them to bless them. You say them, say, you tell them when you say thank you for giving, say thank God. Then the person that received, we said, God used so so person. They, sometimes they will go to church and share that testimony. I was in need to pay my house rent. I didn't have anything. You know, somebody gave me the money. You know, God used somebody to give me the money. No. 
It is lie. That's what they do to prove their God exists or their prayer is working. Or that I prayed after I prayed, I went for that job, I get it. No, you did not get that job because you prayed and went. No, you get the job because they read your resume or your, uh, your uh, CV and see, okay, you see, you qualify. And they hire you and try you to see if you can actually do the job. Then if you can do the job, you continue. If not, they fire you. It's not any God. And that's why you get sick when you are doing that job because you are the one doing the job, not God. If God is the one that is strengthening you or using you to do the job, you don't supposed to get sick. You're not supposed to get exhausted because he will give you strength to walk. But you see, you're calling out when you get exhausted, when you get sick, or when you don't feel like going because you're the one doing the work, not God. So this is the secret that believers use. They are the one that is giving people to claim it is God's blessing. They are the one that goes about and walk and make money and tell you that God has given them money. God has blessed them. No. No God is blessing anyone. No God is cursing anyone. It is people who are doing all these things. So understand how believers work. They do things they say is God. You help them. You, say, you know, they help themselves. They say God is the one helping them. God is the one using them. Where is this God? They cannot show it because it is a faith. It's a belief. They taught them from childhood and they grew up with it, holding it. It is people who are doing work. Never any God, never any Jesus, never any angel, never any spirit doing any work. It is always people who are spirits, who are gods, who are angels. It was always people. Somebody help you say, oh, that was an angel. You see somebody say, you're an angel. Oh, man, you help me. No, just thank the person. But religion has dented everything, our thoughts, our actions. Everything religion has dated all of them. So if you don't attach God to them, they see you as the crazy one, but they are the crazy ones. It's time you trust God and stop lying. Stop lying for God. Stop living for God. It is time you tell yourself the truth and live for yourself. When you live for yourself, I live for myself. That is what is called humanity. Not when I, 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 I live for myself and you ask me to live for someone else. No, you were not born to live for someone else. You were born to live for yourself. Everyone was were born to live for themselves. Nobody was born with two heads. So this issue of, you know, you have to help people. No, it's bullshit. That's nonsense because religion created poverty. Religion created war. And they ask you now to help the poor and the needy. And this religion tell you God created this, God exists. So why can't God, uh, where was God before these people become poor and needy? And why can't God solve their problem? The second video I, I failed to mention was that of Archbishop in Lagos. They are fighting for that position. And they say the one that is going out want to build in Lake Beach. He will not build in Ajegunle. He will not build in a poor places. No, he's in a rich place. He say, yeah, you know, before you retire, they must build a house for you, buy cars for you, all that. Of course, you know, you'll be still getting salary. But these people will tell you, carry a long cross, telling you there is God, there is Jesus. They are the one doing the work. And you see what that archbishop did when they interviewed him. They said there is trouble, you know, in your church. Everybody saw the video, but he still denied it. He said, no, it's not trouble. It's area, area boys. He called his own fellow people because they are his slaves. They are his flock. He called them area boys for them to protest him. He said, no, there's no trouble. No, there's trouble. Then they interview one of the members, elderly men. He said, yeah, you know, they have been having trouble. They are the one lie. They lie for that God. They fight for that God. So when other people come to say, see what you are doing, they say, no, there's no problem. No, no trouble. No, no, no. You know, whenever God is doing something, devil must lift, lift his ugly head. God has, has a rival. That rival must be God also, because God and the Satan are one. So I will, I, I will, I will, I will beg you again as people, stop living and stop lying for imaginary God. Stop living for imaginary God. 
God cannot bless you. God cannot curse you. God cannot defend you. God cannot provide for you. God is a robber. God will rob you your common sense. God will rob you your liberty. God will rob you your resources. If you labor for that thing, why are you not giving glory to yourself? Why are you giving it to imaginary God? Stop lying. If you have not seen God, why are you saying there is God? Say what you know. Say what you have seen. So if you have not seen God and saying there is God, you are lying. I'm begging you, stop lying. And stop condoning those who are lying. You have to be brutal to them. So they know that, because they will say, I'm God with them. No, show them God cannot, I'm evidence that God cannot cause or bless anyone. There's nothing that is happening to me that is not common to human being. Nothing. When they talk about death, ask them, who killed the pastor or man of God they call uh, Mais Muro? He died a young man in plane crash. Imagine if it were an atheist that died like that, they say it's because he was preaching against God. But when is the one of them that dies, they say, it's really like T.B. Joshua, Prophet T.B. Joshua. They say, God. Uh, but in their testimony, you find out they, they even wondered why that guy died. None of them can say. But they say they still believe there is God. Please, my people, wake up and live with human being. It is very possible. Trash God. Trash Jesus. Trash angels. Trash all these fictional characters they put in the holy book. Trash holy book and use your brain. There's no God greater than your brain. There's no God greater than your might. Anything you, you, you imagine to do with your might, you are unstoppable. No one can stop you. Even if they kill you, you are coming back to accomplish that because you are eternal being. This life is not short. It's eternal. Enjoy it. God bless